Every day of the seminar so far, I, except for today, I've worn a tie that has frogs on it. Uh, to, to, uh, and uh, the last day I get more dressed up. I know I look the same as all the other days, but I don't wear a frog tie. Normally when I go into banks or, uh, you know, the Bank of England actually, I don't wear a frog tie. Uh, and I have frog, many cu frog cufflinks that I've, people have given me and I've had made over the years by uh, Asprey and uh, Tiffany and all the other shite. Um, <clears throat> uh, but today this is a more my uh, regular uniform, uh, uh, sand the uh, frog ties. The, um, and for those of you that have been in my office, you see I, I have a lot of frogs, actually hundreds, uh, and pictures in, 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 in our bedroom, we have frogs. We used to have a frog room in our state in uh, Asia, where just the, the whole room was frogs. And because it's very easy to fall into default, I already know who's going to fall into default first and who will fall into default last, but you will all fucking fall into default. All of you. That's just because even though 50, 60 hours here can change whether you're 20, 30, 40, or 50, the uh, changes in 100% and you'll fall into default. My default is... Uh, QLA, but there's 100% QLA and there's 70% QLA, but I have things and I carry things all the time. Um, the, uh, this is supposedly been blessed by some fucking shaman who's got a, either a one foot dick or a one inch dick, I don't remember which, uh, <clears throat> but uh, it's, you know, go with the flow and he's, you know, it's, it's this rock that came from Cro-Magnum or so. I don't know what the fuck, but it's, it's go with the phone. You know, I carry it around. Uh, the and sometimes they'll look in my briefcase to going through security. What, what's this? You know, is it a weapon? Well, actually, it is a weapon. But the uh, first of all, and then uh, another one uh, that uh, supposedly George Patton. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, this bullet, this this cartridge, uh, most of which you should I had the, if I had the weapon, you should put it in your mouth and eat it for most of you because uh, that's what your future shows uh, should have. Uh, and so I have, uh, and this one says, from victory to victory, and, and that, you know, uh, Patton uh, said that many times. So I, I continue to have, even at my level of um, QLA-ism or QLA-bot, uh, uh, I continue all the time. And um, the... Um, and the, and the kids that do <clears throat> uh, find it easier to uh, um, put off default because everybody falls into it. Um, and um, when you call your mom again, the six months you didn't talk to your mom, Joel, was, were good. You know, arguably the best six months of your life, which is the antithesis of every single thing that you've ever been taught about motherhood, God, country, apple pie, etc. Everything you've ever been mother taught in your motherfucking life. But unfortunately, motherhood, apple pie, doesn't get you much. Where's my mom? Does it, mom? And so part of, I keep her around. And for those of you that have been into my office, these are a portion of my mother's ashes. I uh, have my mother's ashes in a, in a felt box next to my desk. Um, the, um, but my default with my parents is not default. That's part of the QLA basis because they helped me, uh, arguably they built my self-esteem. Unlike with the greatest respect to your mom and your dads, um, the likelihood of that happening are not impossible, but fairly remote. Um, last night you saw, oh, Joel, <laughs> when he looks out the window, what does he say? Of course they will. Of course they will what? They uh, lend out the money. Correct, and of course they didn't. They didn't, yeah. yeah. They paid themselves, of course. Correct. 
<clears throat> uh, too big to fail, Secretary of uh, Treasury, uh, uh, played by, I forget the actor's name, but anyway. And, um, but everybody in the know knew they wouldn't. <clears throat> So <clears throat> I'm, I'm a believer in, you know, market forces should prevail and they should let everybody go and boost, as Sally would say. Um, of course, where would we be today if that would have happened? I would have been richer myself, but uh, I can't speak, and I know most of these guys would have been. But what was the takeaway from the movie, some of the takeaways? Yes, Joel? I mean, think, uh, yeah, it's uh, off, it's the epitome of conventional wisdom is almost always incorrect. When she says that um, we can't put restrictions on, we want to give them a hundred and whatever billion, we can't put restrictions on them in case they don't take it. I mean, that is just the epitome of conventional wisdom that is gone wrong. Yes, Patrick? Uh, so they could tell them to buy this company, they could tell them to for me, that was one of the takeaways. Uh, they could tell them to, to, to two companies go together and no, let's make this deal, do those two go together, but they could not tell them in the end, like, uh, now you use the money. Yeah, well, they could have, they could have done that. And the, well, the other part, I don't think it's in the movie, that the Secretary of Treasury actually got on his knees. Oh, was it in the movie? Yeah. Okay, I forgot. And begged. Now, now if I was Secretary of Treasury, I, I would handle it considerably different in a different manner because the government has so much power over these guys. Mm. I mean, I, I wouldn't be, no, Matt, would you please do it? You know, all of a sudden we'd have the Department of Justice on you and every, you know, like they do, and, and then, oh, Matt, is that what you were asking me to do, Dan? No problem. <laughs> yes. The overall message I got is that in good times, rich get rich, and in bad times, they get richer. <laughs> Well, I'm glad, because that is the takeaway, that is. That's why I said that if it had happened, guys like me and others would have gotten uh, much more wealthy. And that's why I say, when it comes down to the haves against the fucking have-nots, and I'm up in the embattlements with my automatic weapons, which I have, and we're stacking up the fucking bodies, like, uh, like during the Korean and the Vietnam War, you know, and in some of these movies where they, you know, the, the, the crazies are trying to get out they're climbing on each other to get to the top. Okay, I'm going to be the fifth horseman of the apocalypse riding through the streets like the Headless Horseman, that program that's on TV. The has, you know, just. <laughs> okay. That's when the alpha males will prevail, you know. And that's when it's going to be all well, from 99% Henry Kissinger's and 1% alpha. Uh, uh, patents and me to 99% alpha males and 1% Henry Kissingers because we're going to take the money away from all the Henry Kissingers with the greatest respect Dr. Kissinger which I doubt he watch, watches my thing but I know people that know him that watch it uh, what are some of the other things that you uh... self interest will always prevail amen Allah be with you yes Andreas uh, when I think it was the chairman of, excuse me the CEO of Lehman if I remember correctly, that played by Woods, the actor. Yeah. Once, once he was in, in real trouble, he went anywhere to get the money. Right? Exemplified by Mitsubishi. Yeah. And 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 just like Simon was saying, you know, it had you know, it was either gonna everything was gonna go to shit, uh, or he had to he had to get the deal done. And when you give yourself no option, and that that's what no a failure is not an option really means. It doesn't mean that there aren't failures. But you've got, you know, if it all falls to pieces, uh, or as Sally would say, it all ends in tears, I mean, you're going to be dead, out of business, kaput. And so, uh, miraculously, somehow it happens. And it's not miraculously, really. Go ahead, Patrick. I have a question. And I think I know why, but I would like to hear your take on it. So when the, the, the boss of GE calls and, and says, you know, we, we are not a financial thing, we make planes and we make light bulbs, and we, are, we don't have any operating money on, on Monday. Why does he not have any money anymore in the, the investment banks? Well, that's what he's saying. That's, that's the, uh, GE is as big as uh, many banks. Uh, and the interesting thing is they're, they're hiving off their financial section, or whatever they call it, that has made 40, 50, up to 60% of their money for years and years and years. They're hiving it off uh, because they feel that they, um, 
well, I, I, my opinion, they feel that they'll get a higher multiple if they're not rated as a financial institution uh, and the, whether that happens or not, I don't know. Yeah. One of the other things was, uh, you know, about having the power when all the heads of the banks were called in and some of them were saying, why should we take the money? We don't need the money. And, and the subtlety was when they said, we will remember you. Yeah. Well, that's exactly right. It wasn't so subtle, actually. Yeah. But uh, we will remember you. And the, because uh, I remember the guy that played Wells Fargo's bank, which was a strong bank then, and it's a stronger bank now. What the, what the fuck? Well, we don't want it. You know? You're having it. Yeah, we, we don't want it. We don't need it. But you're having it. And, and, you know, a good portion, if not a majority, some people say all, which is an exaggeration, that money still hasn't been lent out, any of it. Um, so the, the, ostensibly the main reason they did it never came to fruition. Yeah. One more thing was the guy with the beard, I think he was the economist or someone? Oh, Bernanke. Bernanke. Yeah. And the thing was that, that he wasn't much of a speaker, but a lot of wisdom actually came from him. The way he sold things in his weak voice, the way he said it, everybody got it and everybody then acted on it. Well, he, I mean, uh, uh, a lot of people, I'm not, I'm not necessarily one of them, uh, uh, said that he was the um, saving grace. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, he's running around the world selling a book and now, which is fine. I mean, nothing wrong with that. Yes, David. Warren Buffett wasn't too patriotic to help out. No, no, no. Warren. Uh, Mr. Buffett, I mean, he, he didn't see any, uh, uh, as he says, uh, you know, he missed the uh, dot com uh, because he couldn't f understand it. And a lot of those things, if I remember, he said AIG's got 32,000 financial products. What the f I mean, you're not going to put any money in that. I mean, uh, and uh, so, no. But a lot of those guys, the patriotism, and I was going to wear my, I have a, a pocket handkerchief that's got a U.S. flag on it because of the, I was going to bring up that angle, uh, but I didn't. Uh, the, um, no, when, when push comes to shove, I mean, you think of yourself first, and then maybe your family, second, uh, and then uh, you guys, and well, maybe my mates, my friends, you know, third. Uh, but it's yourself, self-interest rules. Self-interest rules. And where I tell you, in a good way, you need to, be, all of you, just, just about everybody in this room, uh, um, except for myself, needs to be more selfish. But I, I, I look at, you know, I look at self-interest, you know, go, go make a billion dollars and then go save the fucking rainforest. If that's what you want to do. You know, don't, you know, uh, march with uh, placards, as they say, around the fucking embassies uh, when you got, you know, you're sitting there and uh, you haven't cleaned your underwear in three days. I mean, because you got no money. That's all, uh, you know, that's a waste of time. That's a waste of time. But uh, and most of those guys that are doing those marching have nothing but time. Mm -hmm. uh, as they say, we, we've got uh, uh, nothing to do and all day to do it in. But um, anything else about, um, yeah. It's interesting how no matter who the next administration is going to be, a lot of those guys are either promoted or kept their job. Yeah, the only guy that lost his job was the head of Lehman, because they decided to close Lehman down. Uh, and um, and uh, the, Lehman, was, he, Lehman was not the only one that could have been closed down in that... Uh, uh, fiasco or that episode, whatever you want to call it, um, and you know a lot of the people that lost their jobs at Lehman would be the first to tell you that. Uh, there's interesting dialogues in there, and that's not 100% accurate the movie, but there's uh, interesting dialogues in there just to show you how the system worked then. Uh, but it's just, it certainly uh, didn't allow um, free market to reign, which is what capitalism is all about. Now, one final note uh, the, for the YouTubers. During the Great Depression that lasted from the late 20s to the uh, late 30s in, uh, worldwide, it was a worldwide depression, not one single bank went under in Canada. Not one bank. In the great debacle of 2008-9 through 2012, a lot of banks went under, not one bank went under in Canada. And there's uh, interesting reasons, one of which is their lending uh, is much more conservatively based than the rest of the world. Okay, YouTubes, YouTubers, thank you. We'll talk to you today after lunch.
we're, we're in the, um, the close, so to speak, of the financial. We're going to talk about misconception now, but before we do that, there's about 40 of them, I guess, uh, that you've been led to believe all your lives, um, or adult lives anyway, vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, raising money, doing deals, increasing your net worth, um, but however you want to cut it, whatever you want to talk about. But the, 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 the financing, remember I said what the difference now is when you leave here, instead of uh, uh, playing financial instruments, you can learn how to play the whole orchestra, the banks with the accountants, um, the lawyers, the um, um, insurance companies, the stock exchanges, everybody. Uh, and you're going to be the conductor up there. And um, for the first time, you will be in the front seat, so to speak, and you will put them on their back foot. Back foot being de uh, defined as you'll be in control, uh, as opposed to the way it's been heretofore. Irrespective of your education, irrespective of where you come from, um, and irrespective of where you'll go to, um, this works globally. The only two places it doesn't work in, um, are North Pole, South Pole, and um, Sal and I have been to both, as you well know, we've had a, a vows renew, a renew, renewed there. Uh, most recently, the North Pole in April. We're bipolar now, we're bipolar. Uh, and they have no banks or uh, no money. Plenty of wealthy people, though. I mean, because wealthy people go to those places. We met a lot of wealthy people there. But you'll be able to use these all over. And um, uh, we're, uh, I'm not going to ask you to use them judiciously. I'm, 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 I'm demanding it for at least the next 12 months that you're in the mentor program to go to the fucking whip. That's a terminology that um, when you're racing, horse racing, you go to the whip um, to get the uh, horse to move uh, a little quicker in a nice, not a beat, not beat the poor thing. Um, but horses will run until they drop. Birds will fly until they drop. Birds and horses don't feel sorry for themselves. Do they, Joel? Mm hmm Okay. Only Homo sapien feel sorry for themselves. For themselves. And uh, notwithstanding that, you use this stuff, and you're gonna you're gonna be able to finally understand. And that's why we viewed the movie last night, um, "Too Big to Fail." That irrespective, if we when, when the big failure comes, and it's coming, uh, you'll be a better positioned than anybody else on the planet, because you're gonna understand how the whole orchestra works, and you're gonna be able to, in a legally moral ethical way. Uh, you're going to be able to take advantage of the situation. Um, we have a uh, one more uh, webinar uh, as soon as I finish talking here with one of our success stories. Uh, we've had four others during the week, I believe, and um, they're all different. Um, and uh, every group, no matter how sophisticated or unsophisticated they are, <coughs> seems to enjoy taking pictures of my cars outside. Uh, and that's fine. And those are, again, this is the perfect metaphor for yesterday's dreams or today's realities. Um, and for some of you that uh, aspire to have cars like that, and this is the per perfect place to be. Because uh, all the, whilst I did not aspire to have those automobiles, ever, uh, I have them now. It's kind of a byproduct of my success. And um, although I've been driving Rolls Royces since I'm 26, at least Silver Cloud, not to mislead anybody, but I had a Rolls when I was uh, 26, and here we are, I'm 70, and uh, I still have those kind of cars. But the idea of being able to create wealth is not, uh, not just for yourselves, but, I mean, for your families, it transcends that. It's uh, to do uh, some of your uh, do-gooders, uh, and that's great. And uh, I just was reading an email from Sister Luce from uh, Sri Lanka, who we uh, support down there. 
and uh, she thinks I'm mad at her because I haven't had time to email her. Uh, she, she's from uh, Joel's school of thought. She's a fucking nun. Understand what I'm saying, Joel? Okay, but I'm not mad at her just because I didn't have time to write her. Sister Luce, I know you watch this. I'm not mad at you just because I didn't have time to write you. Um, but um, the, um, we'll be able to do good things. Okay, I don't have any, I, the rest of the stuff I don't want to uh, do for YouTube. So uh, if, if you if we have no other questions that YouTube might benefit from, um, YouTube, thank you. We'll see you tonight. It's no fucking problem, nay problem, what's so fucking ever. Okay, um, and now you'll piss off the accountants and, the, uh, and maybe we miss paying taxes and some, I'm not saying that, but uh, you know, <laughs> all, all I know, and if we run out of cash, I put up the fucking cash, but it works. I'm just telling you it works. And uh, the last time I did it in the UK, it was in Slough, and, uh, the, uh, which is kind of a, it's not an upper uh, class neighborhood, uh, uh, to say the least. Yeah, I, I had forgotten that Eaton's right next door. Yeah, next door. Yeah, I learned to drive there, and then, but it's such a contrast. You go from one world to another, it's like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, most big mergers fail because they are trying to tack on new structure to an existing strategy. This forces a strategy change to allow for the new structure. That's the wrong way to do it. What are you doing with the business? You're puffing them up like a hog. What do they do to ho hogs or... I'm not saying this is right, but now uh, with a new uh, grain fed and all that kind of shit, you feed them a lot of water and a lot of grain. Buff them up. A few of you look like you've been puffed up for sale in here yourself. <laughs> okay, before selling or floating a business, <coughs> ensure two or three years of steadily rising profits. You always want to sell the business uh, uh, when the profits and turnover are rising, and they call it in the hockey stick syndrome. You want them going like this. Most of you guys that have sold businesses, it's because they flatten out or even like this and you're expecting the same rates of return for you back when you were making profit because you never know when to sell. I'm always accused, I sell too early. But I always get the fucker away. You, historically, sell too late. And there's an old adage, which is bullshit cliche, you never go broke taking a profit. You never go broke taking a profit. Not after the fucking thing hog, after the erection's already gone. Then you try to stick it in the limp thing. You know. <laughs> now, why, now why are all the men uh, laughing about this? Like they understand what, you know, oh, I can get in there. Yeah. Sure, I can get in there. Why, the girls have more patience with us than unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Tonight when they're drinking, I'll, I'll ask them about it, actually. <laughs> okay, trim expenses, accelerate revenues. Um, the closer the compensation is to actual act, which justifies it, the higher the motivation, the greater the impact. That's why paying cash. And by the way, I'm not recommending to the YouTubers that you pay cash. You check with your accountants, please. You know, I would never give tax advice. And read my disclaimer on my fucking site. Uh, you can puff up a hog for a show, but only if it's basically a good old porker. I think I went out with her. I'm positive I did. Uh, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. Uh, step five, house clean your business. A clean house brings a higher price, figuratively and, li and literally. Neat businesses sell for higher multiples than pigsties. Unless you're in the liquidation, buying liquidated companies, you know, uh, they just do. Um, it's uh, just like in an open house. When you go to an open house, is it all with shit on the floor? No, no. It's all neat and tidy. Uh, tidy up your office and premises. Small images make big impact. When walking a buyer around, also tighten up, renew, start contracts, check suppliers, are they lawyer, check royalty situations, trademarks, settle pending lawsuits, clean up your financials. Be aware that any good due diligence will easily uncover more clumsy efforts. And I'm not suggesting you cover up anything. Approach all the people you know in the same similar business. Do you want to buy your business? One of the reasons of using big international law firms, I've sold a business in Florida to some guy in Milan through, I think it was KPMG because they put it on their international. Blah, and some guy, I mean, and there's a reason why the big four 
used to be the big eight, and the big uh, law firms get premiums because they can get shit done. They can get shit done. Um, uh, do you want to buy the business? I go to all the suppliers and find people. Next, go through your accountants and lawyers. They will, uh, normally what I just said, a good accountant can put your details in an international computer system. I said that. Um, plan early. It takes about a year from putting the business on the market to achieving a sale. About a year. You can get it done quicker, but it's about a year. Um, now, I say this, and I've been saying this since 1993. If you're, and I said this earlier. If you're over 40 and your business is in an up cycle, sell it now. Today, tomorrow. Because you may not see another up cycle. You'll get... If you're 40 and your business is in an up cycle, sell it now. Start something else. Because you might not see another up cycle. I've been saying this for 22 years, and I, I can't begin to tell you how many people have come back, written me. Oh, Dan, why didn't you make me? At the end of the day, they say, why didn't, they make, why didn't you make me? They always say the same thing. Why didn't you, Dan Pena, make me do that? Because they need an excuse. They need to blame somebody else, and they don't want to take accountability, which is no different than how they led their life all along. Okay, six, sell to your business, take it public or franchise it. Okay, okay, what is your business worth? Wrong answer, what the owner thinks he should get for it so he can retire. Wrong answer, the amount of, oh, the amount of money that he needs to retire, excuse me, I got ahead of myself. What is your business worth? Correct answer. Now this is hard to swallow for people. You're what the current market is willing to pay down to and including nothing. Most of your businesses in this room are worth fuck all nothing. I've told you people have paid me millions to take their shit off their hands. Then I, you know, nothing. But you can't emotionally take it. It's your business worth. I've spent five, 10, 50. It's like the bad marriages and relationships you're in. I've got 11 years invested in this fuck face. You know, I'm the mother of his two kids. You should have told me this before I got pregnant the first time. No different in the businesses. No business. You can't admit the business is worth nothing. Um, what is your business worth? More specific to answer between three and 10 times current annual post-tax profits, depending on the industry and the business and many other factors. 10 if you're in a fancy, and it could be up to 15 now. 10 if you're in a fancy business. Three if you're in a dog shit business. And as, as, as Jamie said on the uh, webinar earlier, between four and five times cash flow in that business that he's in. And it's not a glamorous business. There are glamorous businesses. And what, why most internet-based biz, businesses can't suffer fuck all, it's because it's too easy to cheat. It's too easy to cut and paste. It's too, too easy to take businesses from this platform and put them in this a bank account, and as soon as it closes, take the business back away, the traffic, and this business is left with nothing. That has happened at least a thousand times since I got online in 1999 that I'm aware of. At least a thousand. Yes, sir. When Jamie said he was buying it four to five times and selling it about 19, 20 times, was that because after he's rolled them all up, the combined... No, because the 19 or 20 is in a public format, and the four or five is in a private format where there's no liquidity. And that's, now that's a big spread, because normally the spread is five to 10, five to 12. Just coincidentally, the little nebbish, he found an industry... I don't know why he could do it. I don't know, but maybe he did a, a serendipity. I have no idea. I know, because a little fucker, like he says, nobody knows more about that business than he does, because he, he researched, and he's a smart little bastard. Okay. Re remember timing. You uh, operate in a cyclical economy and market, try to sell into an up wave. Uh, sellers and their representatives invariably, this is funny, sellers and rep their representatives invariably present financial projections having more entertainment value than educational value. Warren Buffett said that many years ago, which is true. Uh, the, and that's why when, when I'm looking at stuff, I, I want to see the footnotes of the uh, financials. I don't want to see all the bullshit, just the footnotes. 
because the footnotes will uh, elaborate where the scamming is. And whenever I see a 15, 18, 20 month financial, I don't even look at it. I'm not interested. And because instead of 12 months, they have changed the dates, they've changed you know, this, they've changed that, gap, blah, blah, because they're trying to smooch it together and, and, and make it look better than it is. And I can just see you doing that with some of your... <laughs> okay, step seven, start, buy a business, build it, puff it, sell the business, repeat this process, and you will make tens and even hundreds of millions. There's no other legal way which does not re require luck. Start up, cash out, repeat. Start up, cash out, repeat. Start up, cash out, repeat. I've seen thousands of startup cash out repeats uh, uh, in, in the 22 years, and I've seen kids uh, dumber than you, smarter than you, the same as you, make uh, a gazillion dollars, pounds, you know, uh, euros, you name it, and I've seen it, and this is the way, and this is the way. And uh, the, uh, unless you're trying to build a dynasty, you know, and you want to leave it to your kids, and th that's not what you are. You can use a QLA uh, acquisition model to do that, but in unless you realize it and you cash out, then you're subject to the market vagaries, the value. Okay, any serious buyer will undertake their own evaluation of your business. They will not believe your figures. This is the summary. <sighs> Seven step to exit strategy. To achieve this, you need to, one, make your business independent of you. Two, make your business a turnkey operation. Three, pay yourself and your staff first through good times and bad. Uh, four, pup it up like a pup the hog up. Five, house clean your business. Six, sell your business, take it public or franchise it. And seven, repeat the process. It's as simple as that. Just like the QLA model is seven steps, the exit is seven steps. I mean, it's, it's, and don't make it more difficult than it needs to be. Just like you heard the other seminar from August, all these guys making it more difficult in, it's inherent in you. Because the reason why you, you have to make it more difficult, because if it's not more difficult, then why haven't you done it? So intellectually, emotionally, on every other kind of fucking way, you have to make it more difficult than it is, because then you think, well, shit, I'm a so-and-so mountain. I've done this, I've done that, you know. I play polo with a prince, whatever the fuck you do. Uh, and then why haven't I done it? Why hasn't anybody in my family done it? We know why now, don't we, Joe? Okay. A summary of the extra strategy, create wealth in the tens or hundreds of millions, start or buy a business, build it up, sell it, float it, franchise it. <laughs> and there you are. There are my QLA mentees. <laughs> At the fucking trough. <laughs> At the fu you may recognize the back end of, of, uh, of some of the people in this room. They're all black. Huh? They're all black. They're all black. <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> power to the people. You know? And I mean, it's, uh, and it's legitimate. The irony of all this, and you're not, you're not walking into the bank with a mask and a gun, but the results are the same. The results are the same, and it's worked here in the UK with me and my mentees since 1981, uh, and it's worked uh, in the United States and all over the place, uh, you know, forever. And uh, and it's not new. This is not new stuff. It's now. Any questions? No, oh, now you're all geniuses now. <laughs> okay. No, no questions. Um, Okay. Yes, sir. When you talk talking about systems earlier, putting systems in place, do you do that yourself or do you bring people in to do that, Mr. Penny? Uh, well, I mean, you know, well, he'll probably sell you some fucking systems tonight. I mean, that, <laughs> that's what he does. And I'm not, I'm not recommending him, I'm not in anything, but, you know, he tried to sell me last night, so. Uh, <laughs> so I have your permission to swap spit with Oh, you can talk to him, I mean, I mean that's all right. But. You, it's, this is easily, uh, information easily obtained uh, in the real world. Okay, okay. Uh, YouTubers, okay, um, thank you very much. Ciao.